understanding isotonic contractions. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in today's video we're going to understand more about muscle contractions, in particular isotonic muscle contractions, so that you can really understand this for your level 2 and 3 anatomy and physiology exam. And to help you get ready for that exam there are also three mock questions to help you test your knowledge on today's content. All you need to do is go to our blog which is on the link that is with this video or if you're already on our blog scroll down to the bottom and you'll find the mock questions there. Having said that, also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll get started on the content. So first of all, what is an isotonic contraction? These often get mixed up with something called an isometric contraction. So we're going to understand the difference between these two first. Now an isotonic contraction, iso means same, tonic means tone, so it's actually the same tone. But an isometric contraction is something whereby it means same length. So an isometric contraction is something whereby you'll contract the muscle and you hold it in one particular like position the whole time. So one joint action the whole time, like a plank or an isometric squat or an isometric hold with a barbell, etc. So you're in those positions and that's isometric. You're not moving. Therefore, isotonic is whereby we keep the same tone in the muscle, but we're actually moving it. So we're actually moving through a, a concentric and an eccentric phase as the joint action happens and the muscle is moving. Now, that's an isotonic contraction. Therefore, there is movement happening whilst the muscle is contracting. So that's what we're going to explore in more detail today is isotonic contractions, not isometric contractions. So make sure you don't get those two mixed up. Now, isotonic contractions divide further into two different types of contractions. You have a concentric contraction and an eccentric contraction. Now, these happen with every single movement that you do. So let's just take the bicep curl, for example. When you're doing a bicep curl and you take the Bar, the barbell or the dumbbell up towards your uh, shoulders with your hands at that point you bend at the elbow which is flexion at the elbow and then you're going to lower it back down which extends the elbow now that's the joint action that's happening at the elbow but what's happening for the prime mover which is the bicep here your bicep brachy is that it's actually going through concentric contraction and an eccentric contraction. Now this is what we call isotonic contractions. So it falls underneath the heading of isotonic. Now concentric is whereby we're gonna lift that barbell or dumbbell up towards the clouds. Think C for clouds, C for concentric. And as we're bringing it up towards the clouds, that prime mover, that bicep is getting shorter and it's contracting. And you'll notice the origin and insertion get closer together. Then as we lower the barbell back down, those origin and insertion get further away from each other. And we call this an eccentric contraction, whereby it's lengthening. So you've got concentric contractions, whereby the prime mover is getting shorter. Eccentric contractions, whereby that same prime mover is under tension, it's contracted, but it's getting longer. Now, this is really important. So just looking at that bicep curl, for example, I'm not talking about the tricep muscle. I'm not talking about reciprocal inhibition. It's nothing to do with the tricep in this case. I want you to only think about the bicep brachy, which is the prime mover, and the fact that it's concentrically contracting, getting shorter, and eccentrically contracting, getting longer. And this will really help you understand that an isotonic contraction is both the shortening and the lengthening of that muscle. Now, like I said earlier, there's also about these phases of movement, which will help you understand the concentric and eccentric phase. So in every exercise that you do, in fact, I want you to follow along with this as an idea. Take an exercise, let's just say the squat, nice and straightforward. So let's do the squat exercise. You could do this as body weight. Now, the, the first thing you need to do is find out what is the concentric and what is the eccentric phase of that movement. Now, as a big hint for you, when it's a concentric phase, the load is going up towards the clouds. C for clouds, C for concentric. So we're going to lift up towards the clouds. That's us doing a squat and, and standing back up. If it's the eccentric phase, it's the lowering back down towards the earth. E for eccentric, E for earth. Nice and straightforward. So now we know our squat has the concentric phase and the eccentric phase. Using that information, we can then move on and find out what joint actions occur in the concentric phase. We're going to ditch the eccentric phase, just focus on the concentric phase. 
So that's that lifting phase. What joint actions happen? Well, I have knee extension. I have hip extension. I also have some movement at the ankle, but let's just focus on knee extension and hip extension to start off with. So as I stand up in that squat through the concentric phase, I have my knee extension, hip extension. Then I can break down and find out which muscle is working for that knee extension and hip extension. Well, I know that the quads do knee extension and I know that the glutes do hip extension. So now I have my two main prime movers or my prime mover and my synergist. These prime movers are responsible for the actions that are occurring whilst I'm doing the squat. So during the concentric phase, I have a concentric contraction in the quadriceps and in the gluteus maximus. Then, and then I'm also going to have in the eccentric phase an eccentric contraction of the quads and the glutes. Notice that we just say it's still the quads and the glutes, but it's concentric contraction on the way up, eccentric contraction on the way down. And you can see that it's getting shorter in the concentric phase and longer in the eccentric phase. So there's lots of information in there. Basically go back over that system that we just had about how you break down and understand what movement is happening in every exercise. So go ahead, pick a different exercise and try and work out which movements are happening and what is the concentric phase and the eccentric phase. The more you practice this, the more it's going to help you. And you can really start to understand how that muscle is contracting. And it's an isotonic contraction when you have concentric and eccentric contractions. If you're looking for more help with your level two and three anatomy exam, then make sure you click the link that is with this video to find out more about our revision bootcamp that will break down complex topics like what we just spoke about and make sure you can learn, revise and pass your exam with confidence. Outside of that, make sure that you hit subscribe so you can find more videos just like this and also drop a comment below with your big takeaway from today. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.